The Cape Flat Nature Reserve, which covers a massive 34 hectare area, is planning to burn down 6 hectares of vegetation. Now naturally, a human-made fire in a nature reserve raises a lot of concerns. Like, why on earth would you burn part of a protected area of land? And what would happen to the wildlife living in those areas? The idea is that by planning and executing a controlled burn, hopefully between Feb and April 2024, the nature reserve staff can eliminate bush encroachment, shrubs that are preventing the growth of other indigenous plants, and the movement of animals. The area also poses a threat towards the surrounding habitats and infrastructure. If not burnt at semi-regular intervals around 15 to 20 years, the dune fynbos thicket would grow into subtropical thickets. The proposed area hasn't burnt in over 40 years. All that plant matter would make great fuel if a wildfire were to start. Wildfires burn extremely hot, destroying seed banks which can lead to a loss in species. Plants and animals that do not have any adaptations to wildfire would perish. By putting safety measures in place and doing a controlled burn instead, we can reduce the risk of wildfires. Controlled fires are only allowed under certain circumstances, which we will discuss later. By creating fire breaks, we can restrain the fire to a specified area, and the fire breaks were intentionally made 5 meters wide instead of the advised 3 meters to further reduce the risk of fire jumping. The other idea is that by opening the area, pioneer plants, those that are adapted to harsher environments and grow lower to the ground, can establish a sturdy environment for other plants to grow as their roots hold the soil down in place. Eventually, bushes and trees would be allowed to grow in those areas. However, this is much easier said than done. Invasive species like Port Jackson's willow and wild olive grow much faster and much taller in those cleared areas, inhibiting the growth of indigenous species. The hard-working staff and volunteers at the nature reserve will have to manually remove invasive species. At this point, you're probably wondering what happens to wildlife during the controlled burn. Well, animals that can move quickly will simply flee the area. Slower moving animals will find burrows to hide in, and the dwarf chameleons are literally being moved by hand from the burn zone into the safer surrounding areas. Certain animals like tortoises have a hard shell to protect them from the lower temperatures of a controlled burn. As for plants, some plants grow from bulbs, and those bulbs are safe underground during the cooler control burn, ready to re-sprout once the fire is over. Others have thicker, succulent leaves that help them survive. Most fungal species have a special relationship with fire, and are adapted to release the seeds from the burn cones after a fire. These seeds are taken underground by ants, where only the exterior fruit is eaten and the seed is safe from predators. Before the nature reserve staff can go ahead and burn the area down, they must first apply to the local air quality management and fire and rescue services for a permit. A motivation for why the area must be burnt is required so that specialists can do site inspections as well as a risk assessment to construct a fire management plan. Regular site visits will be done to confirm whether fire breaks and other compliance are in place. The public surrounding the area also has a major role in the process of receiving a permit. The public will be notified by various methods of the planned control burn. In the case of a public member rejecting the permit, will not be granted. Once the nature reserve receives the permit, they still need to wait for the fire season. Cape Town has two late February to April and September to November, when weather conditions are favorable for controlled burn. Fingers crossed. 